Hey everybody, how we doing? Carrying on with our speed run, we um, came across somebody playing it, was it 2200 level yesterday? So I'm still on 1158, and we're going with normal Kruger. Repertoire opponent is slightly stronger at 1160. Normal Kruger. We have the Italian, therefore, F5, the Russo Gambit which we love. Okay, now this is a mistake already, because the knight can't really recapture that pawn. This is the center, for, center pawn fork trick. You've got to know this. Any Italian player, if you ever put your bishop on here, it means you've got to watch out for putting your knight on here. My opponent is Anbu... 195556 five, from India. Yeah. And uh, that just doesn't work. And now even Queen H5 is met with Knight G6. I guess Queen can take here. We trade Queens. You're still down a piece. Very foolish move, my side. I mean, or, or bishop could take. Bishop could take there, but you are still down a piece. I have maybe this. Forcing a trade of knights. Get my queen out in the board. I think we throw in this move now, yeah? Attack the queen, attack everything. Right, White's got three things out, and I'm going to hit them all in one go. So if there, if knight takes, queen takes, I'm all right. I'm alright with that. Don't see any value in pawn takes. Let's get the queen off the back rank. Let's um let's get our junk out. Lots of places the queen cannot go because of these uh, adjacent knights on opposite colour squares. Okay, there we go. It is queen takes, yeah. I also have this, I could force the queens off too and just uh, really accelerate the uh, the simplification. Simplification. All right, well, there's no option of the chick now. So I'd like to get this bishop out and I'd like to long castle. The problem is if I move my bishop, the b7 pawn is undefended. Um, I can't go there, unfortunately. Um, if I get this bishop out, I can't castle short either because of this annoying meddlesome priest. So I'm going to hit the bishop. And he's going to have to vacate one of these diagonals. So. All right, so he's, he's stayed on this one. So he stayed looking at G8. But this does mean that I can, for example, get my bishop out. A castling we will go. Can't do that. Let me put myself in check. All right. We've got 15 minutes. Loads of time. Um, hmm. Okay, king safety I think is paramount, right? So how about even bishop d7 castles? Here, we could have a trade, but that's bad because, oh no, that you can't take because queen takes. It's actually maybe even bishop b6. Takes, takes, I'm just ready to castle. Bishop b6, then rook here. My bishop's then pinned. And he's got two attackers on it. So you've got to always think about the uh, alternative move orders. I could do bishop e7, actually. Bishop e7 is not a bad idea. Just to tie everything together. Then I can bring my bishop out and just merrily castle. Okay, so he's, what's the point of this move? First question you should always ask. Well, clearly he wants to get his dark square bishop out. This is a threat. Right? He wants to do this. He's just told me he wants to do it. Um, and therefore, I've got time to prepare. And, you know, fair warning. If if the bishop comes out to g5, I have to move my queen. I can't go there or there. What am I going to do? Go here? It's not the end of the world. Then we could have the rook coming over. 
Or I could just push H6 and prevent that idea entirely. So let's say, for example, I play this. I'm slightly worried about this open file, the fact that I'm just not castled yet. And it's annoying me. So let's say I do this and he does this. I have to move my queen. Maybe queen f8. Now that his bishop's out, he can play rook e1. It would be rook f1 because it would be guarded by his other rook. That's the issue. So I think I'm going to push h6 and de encourage this idea. I note that my knight is now only defended by the queen, but that's okay. I've got bishops aplenty. I just want to get my king to safety. I get my king to safety, happy days. All right, I'm a pawn down, but I have a knight, whereas my opponent does not. There we go. Now this rook is presently undefended. You're not going to sacrifice your queen. So let's say just even bishop d7. Take. Maybe that's the idea. Maybe it's rook takes, queen takes, queen takes. But over rook takes, king takes. And also this. Now I can capture there with a the, with the bishop as well, so now I'm getting ready to castle, which is good. Yeah, that is this knight c3, all the way at the start. You've got to be very careful about that. And it looks so natural. You're just getting your pieces out, you know, controlling the center. But then after this, it's a tempo move as well because we're hitting the knight. And this is the beginning of his troubles. And he decided to give up this knight here as well, thinking he was going to get it back. Thinking that was a fork. But I know these patterns better than he does. Okay. He's still thinking now. Queen takes, bishop takes, happy days. There's nothing to capture there. Queen takes, sorry, rook takes bishop. I can take with the queen or the king. Can't take with the knight. Knight is still technically pinned. But my next move is probably going to be long castles. Center pawn fork trick comes up in um, a bunch of different lines. It can have like four knights, Italian variation. Um, we'll just do a. Uh, quick analysis board while we're here. Well, well he's, he's having a good thing. So. What is Crystal League? I have no idea. So, like four knights. Yeah, so once you've got this Vienna knight out, or the Queen's knight out, you play this. This is the, pretty much the position that, that we got to. And here, this this is slightly different. So you take with the knight, they take back there, right? And black has won a pawn. So, okay, we have movement. We have pawn to a3 played on the board. Um, I think I simply just castle there. Yep. <clears throat> this doesn't scare me. I can take any number of ways. I've now connected my rooks. And now it's time to press down with the advantage of my uh, extra piece. He has an extra pawn. Which pawn is it? So always good to bear in mind which pawn it is. Um, okay, well, that's super well defended. So rook hg8 looks nice. 
problem is if I move my bishop, we've got takes, 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 I give up two rooks for a queen. I don't really want to do that. Um, but I do like the idea of getting my bishop onto this diagonal here. Can't attack that. Bishop takes. This is good. Maybe even like, you know, if I got my queen to here. And bishop here would be more of a threat because I'm also threatening to come in. But I don't know. I'm going to centralize my rook anyway. Just because. I could always drop this bishop back down. Well, what is this? You just want to trade everything off. Okay, I take rook takes. My knight's under attack. But I can move it. can't move it to here. I could just let him take. I just move my king out of the way. Um, I've got knight takes, so... Which is best? Allow him to take? Well, let's, let's follow it through. I take rook takes. My bishop's fine. My knight can't go there. So it would like have to come back here, hit the rook. We have just simplified, it's absolutely fine. Or let's say king b8 or king c7. Queen can't check again. Can't go to any of these squares. So let's say I go here, takes, takes. Having said that, I don't really want to put my king on a dark square when my opponent's got a dark square bishop. There, takes, check. Wins the queen back, but... There, takes, check, queen blocks, I take queen... No, I've just, I've lost material there. There's no, no argument for that. Okay, let's just take. Let's just take and play on. Okay, so the knight's under attack, so I'm going to drop my knight back here. With tempo against the rook. He's now down to two rooks and a bishop. I've got two rooks, a bishop, and a knight. So I'm going to try and trade off the bishops. I'm going to try and trade off the rooks. I'm going to try... This actually just creates double tensione. And, you know... There's going to be limbs flying around at that point. All right. Changes nothing. So this is my first thought. Never go with your first thought. Knight here is kind of good. Knight there. That, I mean, that's a really nice square for that old knight. Here, and let's say he trades off. I get double pawns here, but... Yeah, maybe it's not ideal. I feel like I want to improve the knight again. So I'm going to bring the knight out. Let's bring the knight out again. It's really, it's not... Am I, am I two pawns down? When did I lose another pawn? He's now got these two pawns. No, I've been... Uh, oh. No. It's been a piece for two pawns for a while. All right, this I like, pins this pawn, right? Now he's preventing my knight from coming in here, but I'm just gonna do this because I wanna trade stuff off. He's got two options, three options really. He can block, he can vacate the open file, which is a little win, little mini win for me, or he can trade off, which is also a little mini win for me because I now have the open file and this move is something I would love to play because it traps both the bishop and the rook. If the bishop moves, the rook falls, right? If the rook moves, the bishop falls and it comes with check, forcing the king here. Okay, well, what are we doing? We're, we're just simplifying trading down. That was not a well thought through move. It's just giving me a pawn back. Right, I think my rook now belongs on the seventh. Because I've got issues, you know, I've got two pawn islands, each of which must be defended by a piece. Problem with knights and pawns is, the knight could defend the pawn, 
but the knight itself might be undefended. Bishops and pawns pair up really well because the bishop can defend the rearmost pawn and in turn um, be defended by it. Also queens and that. Right now that's not that's not defended, right? Everything else oh, that's not defended either. So this is my issue. Okay, he wants to push forward with a pawn. I could block that idea. I could come in, try and attack. I could just lift my king. I like attacking, don't you? King's the only defender of that. Okay, and this rook's now just run away like a little coward that he is. Now, that, that is knight forkable, but I don't think I'm going to sneak that one in. But let's, let's do, you know, stick the knight up there. I might drop my rook back here. His rook's going nowhere for now. What's he going to do? Is he going to move his king? Is he going to start pushing pawns? I reckon b3. There you go, b3. That ain't working. I don't like that because it falls into a check and drops a pawn. Just one of the many attractive features of the Russo Gambit, the center pawn fork trick, or at least a variation of it. So the thing, the thing to watch out for is if, you, if you're white and you ever put your bishop in the Italian position, i.e. c4. Right, just be wary of this. When the d-pawn has not yet deployed, we'll be careful. All right, here we go. If I do this, I've made room for my knight, yeah? How do you defend that pawn? Well, I think he's instinctively gonna, gonna push forward, which would be a blunder, because he has forked. There's me saying I didn't think I'd be able to sneak my knight in there, but the point is, this is like a decoy idea, right? I, I pretended to attack something else, and my opponent just went, oh, issue I need to solve, wins the game. Yeah? Happy days. All right, I'm going to grab this over to a proper analysis board, and I'll see you in there. All right, guys. But nobody follows Bobby Risto on uh, YouTube, eh? Former vegan, now carnivore, orthodox Christian bodybuilder. There you go. 85 accuracy from yours truly. One mistake, though. One mistake. Okay. I'm going to see it from Black's perspective. And this is a mistake. Right? Already. And it was a, he played that quickly as well. Great move. Mistake to recapture the pawn. Yeah? So easily done. And now it's... 2.8 in Black's favour. Right, and from this point, I never lost any initiative. That was the best move, apparently. All best moves. Cool. Best. Best. This is quality stuff, mate. But Black's winning. Simply winning. Best, best. This is some good, sh you know. Ooh. C6. Wicked. Best moves. Look at all these best moves flying about, man. Okay, that wasn't the best move. That was not the best move. Undefending my knight. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, 0 0.8 of a pawn. Anyway, this is what we, we get. I do this. That's my mistake. Huh. So after this, what's the problem with that? My queen's the only defender of that and the only defender of that. Is that is that the issue? Well, I don't know. I don't know. So from this point, what's, what's going on? Okay, he plays bishop c3. Queen has to go to g5. 
No, a knight defends that. Queen takes, bishop takes, yes. Hangs a pawn. Well, I mean, that's like eight moves. That's really buried, man. That was really buried. Uh, forget that. Okay. I mean, it, it, it was it was very sharp here. And that's a miss. Yeah, he, he, I don't know. This, this, is, this is quite slow. But I was very proud of that fork at the end. Okay, this is good. Now, and and here it just is just bodies everywhere. No, no. It's saying sack the bishop on here. He takes my knight, and it's saying you would trade rooks. What? So what about? This just taking the knight. <laughs> okay. All right. Interesting. Interesting idea. Tradey, tradey, checkmate threat. Now he's got to do something about that, so I have just won a free pawn. Interesting stuff. Anyway, we'll go back to what actually happened. Yeah. It really is a walk-in from this point. I mean, it's minus three, eh? So, uh, and again, just trading, giving giving material away. And this, I this, I I like this idea. Look, it seems slow. And then this is the trick. I'm pretending I'm going after this, but in reality, there's a much bigger threat. So there you go. All good. And in the review, 1950. 1950. This gives me confidence. It's giving me, yeah, you know, I'm having a series of games around the 2000 mark. It give, gives me confidence that I can, um, I can get up to this. So my opponent played very well as well. 1550, obviously, you know, was on the back foot from early on. But uh, very enjoyable Russo, I think you'll agree. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you soon.